Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about effect of RF and microwave radiation on human body. So, the outline of the presentation today is we will first talk about RF sources which are present for the commercial as well as defense application. Then we will talk about microwave heating principle. I am sure all of you might have used microwave oven or seen somebody using microwave oven and you are familiar with that microwave oven can do the cooking. Then we will talk about radiation pattern of antenna, we will talk about safety norms in India and in other countries. We have done radiation measurements at more than 1000 places. Then we will tell you what we have found. And then we are going to review biological effects. Yes, I just want to tell you neither I am a biology professor and most of you are not biology student, but our human body is a biological body. So, I am sure you will be able to correlate with these biological effect. And the last one is my most favorite one that is solutions. Uh, in fact, my definition of engineers is that engineers are born to solve practical problems. So, first we will identify what are the problems and then we look at the solutions. So, let us look at what are the different RF sources in the commercial domain. So, these are RF sources in India but it would be similar thing in other countries also. So, we can see here FM towers are there, typical frequency range of FM towers is between 88 to 108 megahertz and they may be actually transmitting about 10 kilowatt of power. Of course, there are some FM towers which are there inside let us say colleges or community services there, they may be allowed only to transmit 50 watt of power. Now, there are TV towers, this particular frequency band I have written specifically for tower in Mumbai which is situated in Worli and that particular tower transmits about 40 kilo watt of power and in fact that is a lot of power. Now, the antenna which transmits this particular power is mounted roughly at a height of 300 meter and in fact till about 10 years back most of the buildings around this Worli area were not even had a height of 50 meter. But now in the Worli sky face because it is very expensive area now multiple buildings have come which have a height of 200 to close to 300 meter. And now these buildings are coming in the main beam radiation of the antenna and uh, I can already forewarn people that in another 5 to 10 years there may be a lot of health problem occurring in those high rise buildings which are in the main beam of the antenna. Then there are AM towers are there, typical frequency range is 530 to 1620 kHz and these AM towers may transmit about 100 kilowatt of power up to even 1 megawatt of power. However, these people take precaution and at least within 1 kilometer radius there is a no residential building or complex. So, they do know that these are causing health hazards and hence they take that precaution. Now, we have Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi works even though I have written 2.4 to 2.5 but actual frequency ranges from 2.4 to 2.483 gigahertz. And these days Wi-Fi modems are there almost everywhere. We have Wi-Fi enabled airports, railway stations, colleges, schools and various campuses and now in fact there are proposals to make Wi-Fi enabled cities. Uh, in fact, this is going to cause lot of health problem to various people also in time to come. Then we have cell towers, in India we have several technologies which are 800 megahertz which is basically CDMA, 900 is GSM 900, then GSM 1800, then we have 3G and then we have 4G and in India we allow them to transmit 20 watt of power and there is an extra concession given to 4G operators, they can transmit up to 40 watt of power. And we have more than 6 lakh towers in India. And then of course, mobile phone, I think almost all the people today have mobile phones. And in the mobile phones again depending upon the technology, there may be a 2 watt power transmission allowed for GSM 900 phone and for other GSM 1800, 3G, 4G, generally 1 watt power is allowed. 
But however, there are 100 crore plus subscribers in India. And just to tell you, let's say if you initiate a call using a cell phone, what really happens? Let's take a case where a mobile phone is transmitting one watt of power. It goes to the nearest base station and that base station actually transmits 20 watt of power to communicate with this particular cell phone. Then this base station through let's say some switching network communicates to that other base station. That base station will transmit another 20 watt of power to the mobile phone which is going to transmit one watt of power. So for one mobile phone connection, 1 plus 20 plus 20 plus 1, total 42 watt power has been consumed. And you will be surprised that effective power used by cell phones as well as cell tower is only 0.000001 watt. So that means 41.999999 watt power is getting dissipated in the atmosphere. And of course, when you initiate a call, roughly one third of the power is getting absorbed in your own body, especially if you keep that cell phone like this, and then one third of the power is going towards your head. But as far as the cell towers are concerned, people living in the close vicinity are getting affected. The birds flying in that particular region are getting affected also. Now, there are several sources for defense also. But I'll just tell briefly about these things. So they do use radar systems, which can be pulse and continuous. And in several defense applications, they may be even transmitting one megawatt of power. However, these defense forces do take precaution. Of course, they do use a lot of high power microwave sources. And they use transmitters in almost all these band, HF high frequency, VHF very high frequency, UHF ultra high frequency and microwave. So they do use a lot of high power for many of their communication requirement. Of course, there is a microwave bomb also. So microwave bomb, what it does, it actually transmits a very high power impulse. And what happens because of that, the receivers in that particular area get burnt and that causes a total damage. And of course, microwave has been used as a microwave weapon. If that microwave high power beam is targeted towards a certain person or people, then those people can get seriously affected. In fact, this is being also used as a non-lethal weapon, especially for crowd dispersion. So now let's talk about a microwave heating principle. Now you might wonder that we are talking about RF, why we are talking about microwave heating principle. I'll come to that in a short while. But what really happens when we put the food inside a microwave oven, it's the water in the food which actually receives this microwave radiation and these water molecules start vibrating. And you know at what speed they vibrate? At 2.45 gigahertz, they vibrate at a speed of 2.45 billion times per second. So when that vibration takes place, that vibration causes friction and that friction causes heating and that heating is responsible for cooking the food. So now how that is related with the human body? So let's say human body consists of 70% liquid and in fact our human brain consists of 80% liquid. So what happens, let's say if we keep the phone like this here, so these microwave radiation which are coming, so they start vibrating water, fluid, and blood molecules. And these things start vibrating. Let's say if it is a 900 megahertz technology, then they are vibrating at a speed of 900 million times per second. And inside the body, then these things actually cause DNA damage, which is known as non-thermal effect. And that friction then leads to heat, and that is known as thermal effect. So non-thermal effects are several times more harmful than thermal effects. So I also want to tell you that there is a big uh, debate going on all over the world. People say it is sun heating is more versus microwave heating. But just to tell you, the two heating processes are totally different. And let me explain in a very simple manner. So these people, especially the operators and their supporters, they talk about well, sun density is something like one kilowatt per meter square, whereas we are talking about microwave 
power which could be as 1 milliwatt per meter square or maybe 100 milliwatt per meter square. So, 1 kilowatt versus 1 milliwatt sounds huge difference. But let me explain the concept here. So, what happens when sun, we are going outside in the sun. First of all, we are not going to stand in the sun for 24 hours, okay. Whereas, microwave radiation is absorbed 24 hours, especially if you are living next to the cell tower. So, now this radiation when you stand in the sun, so what happens? The sun rays come here and it actually basically skin acts as a protective layer. So, the heating if at all takes place that is from outside then it goes inside, but the skin heating takes place and the body starts sweating or there may be a breeze. So, it really speaking becomes better of course, you do not stand for long time and even a cloth will protect you from that. Whereas, microwave radiation it actually penetrates the body entire body wherever it falls and then what happens that heating goes deep inside the skin and then the water blood fluid molecules start vibrating and that internal heating is now trapped by the same skin and that is why there are more problems because of the microwave heating. Another very simple example if you put let us say one cup of water in the sun it is never ever going to boil, but if you keep one cup of water inside a microwave oven it is going to boil within 1 to 2 minutes. So, you can see that the two phenomena are totally different. So, let me just ask you people only a very simple question and you can actually think about it and the question is simple that if you have used cell phone for more than 20 to 30 minutes, have you noticed your ear gets warm? I am sure majority of you would have noticed it is getting warm. So, what is the reason? In fact, when we keep the cell phone like this, the ear lobe is closest to the mobile phone and the blood inside the ear lobe does not circulate much. So, what happens when this is impinging microwave radiation, it is heating the blood and it has been reported that after about 20 minutes or so, the ear lobe temperature goes up by 1 degree centigrade and then the brain realizes that something is wrong and then a process known as thermoregulatory mechanism starts and the body becomes uniform. But think about this damage of 1 degree centigrade. See body temperature is 98.4 degree Fahrenheit. You add 1 degree centigrade which is equal to 1.8 degree Fahrenheit and if you add the two things it becomes 100.2 degree fever. So, every time you use 20 minutes or 30 minutes you are getting a fever of 100 degree and I am sure most of you people will not like to have the fever. So, anyway this warm sensation in the beginning leads to the pain and then slowly that pain then converts to irreversible hearing loss which can be partial or full hearing loss as well as it can also lead to ear tumor. In fact, I have started writing my own newsletter also uh, cell phone tower newsletters. In fact, you can just google search it and you can download or you can send me an email and my emails are given on my first slide itself. So, you can send me and I will mail you these uh, three newsletters and in one of the newsletters I have actually given the interviews of five different ENT specialists and they have unanimously agreed that they are getting very large number of cases these days where people are suffering from partial or full hearing loss as well as ear tumor. So, please take care of your ear. So, now how do we define radiation from cell phone? In fact, the radiation from the cell phone is defined by its SAR value. SAR is known as specific absorption rate and this limit has been set as 1.6 watt per kg. However, this limit was set in 1998 and this limit was set for only 6 minutes per day use. So, the cell phones which you people are using they were actually designed only for 6 minutes per day use. However, do not be too much afraid also there is a safety margin of 3 to 4. That means really speaking a person should not use cell phone for more than 18 to 24 minutes per day. In fact, I would like to recommend that next time when you are going to buy your next cell phone, you check what is the SAR value. 
and it is easy to check these things are available on the internet or on the smartphone. You can actually say star hash 07 hash and then you can check the SAR value. So the lower the SAR value, better it would be. So typical SAR value may vary from 0 0.3 up to about 1.59, just below 1.6. Now this information is not at all available to people in India. In fact, I just want to tell you, many people are using iPhone or other phones, but just to tell you, so if you look at this here, that iPhone of course is from apple.com, you have to go through the legal, so they know there are legal issues are there and there are some RF exposure and what it says, well the limit is 1.6 watt per kg and their phone has a SAR value of 1.19 for head and full body is 1.2, hence it is within the limit. However, how they test the cell phone, they test the cell phone, read this here, carry iPhone at least 5 mm away from your body to ensure exposure levels remain at or below the as tested level. So that means they are testing the mobile phone by keeping 5 mm away and then they are saying this is the SAR value. So let me ask you people, do you really, you know, measure 5 mm and keep the cell phone like this? No, not really. Many people use cell phone like this or they hold cell phone like this and there are of course much smarter people, they do multitasking and they use cell phone like this. Now in this situation, 90% of the radiation is going towards your body and the same Apple iPhone also tells you that to reduce exposure to RF energy, use a hands-free option such as built-in speaker, supplied headphones or similar accessories. So if there was a no health problem because of the RF radiation, then why take precaution? Why these people are telling you to reduce exposure to RF energy? So one should really think about, yes, there is definitely a problem and we'll see what are these problems and when these things start coming. So I want to mention an interphone study was actually started in 2000 and it followed all the protocols of WHO which is World Health Organization and the study started at 2000 and it actually took 10 years, the report came in May 2010, it actually took cases from 13 different countries and it actually studied about 5,117 brain tumor cases. And of course, the study involved about $25 million and one third of that money came from the cellular industry. So now let's see what is the conclusion. The conclusion says no overall increase in the risk and you start thinking, oh good, we are safe. No, let me tell you, this is no overall increase in the risk is for average user. And what is the definition of average user? Two hours per month. And two hours per month comes out to be two into 60, 120 minutes per month. That really comes out to be four minutes per day. So if you use cell phone only for four minutes per day, no problem. But if you use for longer time, then there is a problem. And what is the heavy user definition? half hour per day over 8 to 10 years and what they found double to quadruple brain tumor risk. Now I just want to tell you since then the mobile phone technology has improved. Now the cell phone technology has improved. Now it actually checks what is the radiation intensity in that particular area and if it is small then it will transmit high power and if it is high then it will transmit low power. So in fact, I do recommend that when you are inside a building or if you are inside a lift where the signal strength may be low and that you can see by one or two bars on your mobile phone. So in that case, take precaution, don't use for longer time. So but those precautions actually have resulted into little better thing and after a few slides, I'm going to tell you what are those things. So now I want to tell you that this study which came in May 2010, that International Agency for Research or Cancer took one full year and their report came in 31st May 2011. And now IARC classified radio frequency electromagnetic fields 
as possible carcinogen to human that is known as class 2 B. However, WHO even though this is a part of WHO, WHO designated only cell phones as possible human carcinogen and they designated as class 2 B. Now, it is really strange that their own agency says radio frequency electromagnetic field which will actually encompass radiation from all sources which can be radar, which can be TV towers, which can be cell towers, which can be Wi-Fi. However, WHO simply made it only cell phone. So, now the question comes why WHO did that? So, you have to really think about WHO gets funding from whom? Well, WHO gets funding from various governments of the world and the various governments of the world are making lots of money from cellular operators. So, just to give you a little bit of an idea, between 2013 and 2016, Indian government did the spectrum auction and they raised about 3 lakh crore rupees and this is just by spectrum auction. They are getting huge money by income tax, sale tax and now GST. So, it is one of the biggest revenue today for the government of India and again in 2018, they are planning to have another round of spectrum auction and they are hoping to garner more than 1 lakh crore and that is why government is also relatively silent about the health hazard and of course, seller industry will never tell that there are health problems associated with the overuse of cell phone. Just like cigarette industry, cigarette industry never admitted that they are a health problem. Even 40, 50 years back, we knew that cigarette smoking is bad, yet it was only about 5 years back when if you go to watch a movie or if you see some TV channel, so there was somebody smoking then it says cigarette is injurious to health and now for last one year it has started showing smoking kills. However, now even though cell phone is class 2B, what class 2B really means? It is possible human carcinogen and what it really means? There are limited evidences. However, I will tell you since this report came in May 2011, now 7 years have almost coming or 6 and a half years are gone and there are several more evidences have come and now scientists are after WHO and they are telling WHO to now make this thing as class 2A which is known as probable carcinogen or even class 1 which is known human carcinogen. So, we have to wait, WHO has promised that they will come out with their report in May 2018. So, let us see what will be that particular report. So, now I just also want to tell you that risk to the children is much more compared to an adult and in fact, uh, this study has been reported where uh, let us say a child is using cell phone. So, for a 5 year old, the penetration is almost 75 percent. For a 10 year old or teenagers, the penetration is about 50 percent and for an adult, the penetration is 25 percent. So, for children, because their skulls are smaller and thinner, so they absorb the more radiation and also their cells are growing. So, they get affected much more. In fact, there are many European countries, they have actually banned use of cell phone by children. In fact, they are advocating that children below 12 years should not use cell phone or if at all they use cell phone, they should use it only for emergency use. In fact, actually I want to tell you all people that the invention of cell phones was actually meant only for emergency use and it was never ever meant to be used for hours and hours every day. So, now I want to mention that the recent study after 2011, the study is October 2014 and what that study is, it is a very interesting study. So, I just want to tell you what it shows here malignant brain tumor versus cumulative use. So, here you can see along this axis the use is from 0 to 10,000 hours and this is the odd ratio of getting malignant brain tumor. I have actually put a line somewhere over here 
and the reason for that is this corresponds to about 9500 hours and I know that there are several younger people and even some of the sales people they use cell phone for four hours per day and if you have been using it for 6.5 years you will consume 9500 hours. So now here what these plots are there are three plots are there. So basically you can say this is the lower end to the maximum and this is the average or mean thing okay and this is valid more for children. So if you look at the odd ratio for children corresponding to this if you look at it here that is 3.5. So that means odd ratio for children of getting brain tumor is 350 percent and even for a normal person this is about 2.5 which is 250 percent and this is all in 6.5 years. So in about 8 to 10 years malignant brain tumor may increase by 400 percent especially for young children. So please take care of your health. So now of course we know that these things are very dangerous and this is becoming now more and more evident also. So this is the report in Asian Age newspaper July 10, 2017 and I just want to mention here what they are saying. Every year 40,000 to 50,000 people are diagnosed with brain tumor in India and out of which 20% are children and you can actually even say that doctor said that this could be attributed to long term mobile phone use. So even here another doctor is also claiming that these are the things which are causing health problem. So we want especially the younger generation to use cell phone only for short duration. We understand that cell phone is absolute fantastic technology. In fact, these days you can do so many things with your cell phone, but yet you need to take precautions. I'm going to tell you now what are the precautions to be taken. In fact, this article was written by me for Popular Science Magazine. It came in September 2011. So what precautions I suggest? First is limit your use. And I do not advise anybody to use cell phone for more than 20 minutes. Talk for short duration. Now if possible use SMS. Now in 2011 WhatsApp was not there but nowadays WhatsApp is there. And you know when you are actually typing SMS or WhatsApp there is a very little radiation. Uh, just to tell you that even if you are not using cell phone it still transmits about one pulse per minute to the base station. But if you have Wi-Fi on and Bluetooth on and so many applications on, then it may be two to four pulses per minute to the base station. So let's say when you are typing, it is a normal one or two pulses per minute. It is only when you press the send button, then there is a larger radiation. So I would advise that use even SMS or WhatsApp lesser number of times. Use cell phone with lower SAR value because lower the SAR value lesser will be the radiation. However, please remember if you are making call for longer time cell towers are going to radiate continuously. So you all are responsible for creating electromagnetic pollution. In fact, we have been telling the government now that let electromagnetic radiation be classified as fourth pollution. The other three pollutions are water, air and noise. Use speaker phone or wire hands free. In fact, uh, you can have a mobile phone and put it in the speaker phone and you can talk. Of course, in the public you can't do that but at least when you are inside the home you can do that. You can use wire hand free but the thing is how you are using this. So let's say you put the wires hand free. Then where is your phone? Are you holding it in your hand? then your hand will receive more radiation. If you are putting in the shirt pocket, then your heart will receive more radiation. If you are putting in the front or back pocket, then that body area will receive more radiation. So you have to decide which part of the body you don't like. Of course, you can use Bluetooth. Uh, just to tell you, Bluetooth transmits maximum 10 milliwatt of power, whereas mobile phones may transmit 1 watt of power. So naturally, Bluetooth transmitted power of 10 milliwatt is 100 times less than the mobile phone. But again how you use it. 
So what I have seen many a times that people put this Bluetooth over here and let's say put the cell phone like this. So now what is happening? Bluetooth is transmitting 10 milliwatt. This mobile phone is transmitting 10 milliwatt to this Bluetooth and it is anyway transmitting 1 watt of power. So you have actually speaking increase your exposure to the microwave radiation. So the best thing is if you are using Bluetooth, keep the cell phone and the cell phone communication can take place through Bluetooth till about 5 meter distance. So you can be at a distance, you can do some exercise also, you can do walk and talk and in fact suppose if the other party is giving you too much stress, you can do some yoga exercise also, breathe in, breathe out so that you can relax. So in fact I do recommend that use the landline wherever it is available because landline has no radiation. Do not keep cell phone in your hand pocket for long. Remember it is transmitting one pulse per minute to maybe several pulses per minute to the base station. So if you are keeping the cell phone for 6 to 8 hours in your pocket, you are going to get larger exposure. So I always recommend that you know when you go to home your office, keep the cell phone away from you at at least one foot distance and especially when you are sleeping, don't keep cell phone next to your pillow. You may be sleeping but your cell phone is not. So it is actually sending radiation towards your body. So I recommend that you keep the cell phone at an arm's length so you can reach the cell phone in emergency. So in the night please sleep properly. So you also sleep properly and you let your friends and relatives also sleep properly. So I will conclude my lecture today at this particular point and in the next lecture I am going to talk about radiation health hazards to the people who are living or working close to the cellar towers. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.